Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 25th of October. India slams Pakistan for raking up Kashmir at UNSC meet amid Israel Hamas debate. China Bhutan hold delegation level talks on pending border issues. And Taliban appoint representative for Hindu Sikhs in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. After giving suggestions at the United Nations Security Council meeting on the ongoing Israel-Gaza war, India on Tuesday said it will treat the remarks by Pakistan to Kashmir with the contempt it deserves and will not dignify it with a response. The remarks by India's Deputy Permanent Representative at the UN, R. Ravindra, came after Pakistan's UN envoy Muni Rakram made an odd comparison between the situation in the valley and the Israel-Gaza war. He said India will not dignify Pakistan's comments with a response. Earlier, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a Security Council meeting said that all acts of terrorism are unlawful and unjustifiable, whether they are carried out by lashkar e taiba the Pakistan-based terror outfit, or by Hamas. He also emphasized the Security Council's responsibility to condemn member states that provide support in terms of arming, financing and training to Hamas or any other terrorist group involved in such heinous acts. Mr. President, before I end, there was a remark of habitual nature by one delegation referring to union territories that are integral and inalienable part of my country. I would treat these remarks with contempt they deserve and not dignify them with a response in the interest of time. Bhutanese Foreign Minister Tandi Dorji on Tuesday held delegation-level talks with China's Deputy Foreign Minister Sun Dong in Beijing to carry forward the negotiation for settling the boundary disputes between the two countries. In a statement, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said Beijing is ready to work with Bhutan in the same direction and will seize the historic opportunity to complete an important process as soon as possible. Tim Fu and Beijing have been long engaged in unresolved border disputes with China laying claim on certain territories in northern Bhutan. In 2017, Beijing was also engaged in a standoff with New Delhi and Tim Fu at Doklam, the tri-junction between Bhutan, China and India, after it tried to construct a road leading to the shared junction. Moving on. An IMF delegation is scheduled to visit Pakistan next month for talks regarding the initial assessment of the country's $3 billion standby arrangement. The development was confirmed by Esther Parez Ruiz, the global lender's resident representative to Pakistan. The global lender had approved a standby arrangement of $2.5 billion for the South Asian nation after the previous bailout program expired in June this year. Under the arrangement, Pakistan received $1.2 billion from the IMF as the first tranche in July, averting sovereign debt default. Local media reports have highlighted that an all-out effort is being made by the caretaker government as the country tries to navigate a tricky path to economic recovery. Moving on. Soaring prices of gas and electricity have continued to afflict the lives of locals across Pakistan with no hopes of any relief soon. A report. People across Pakistan have continued to express anger over the ongoing economic crisis, with soaring gas and electricity prices making it difficult to manage household budgets. The inflation rate rose to 31.4% in September, from 27.4% in August, primarily due to high fuel and energy prices. In the latest, the government has approved another gas tariff hike by up to 193% starting from November 1st. Pe, 
the South Asian country is embarking on a tricky path to economic recovery after a $3 billion IMF loan program in July averted a sovereign debt default but with conditions that have complicated efforts to control inflation. Taliban has recently appointed a representative for the Hindu and Sikh communities in Afghanistan, saying it would play a crucial role in the process of returning seized properties to the Hindus and Sikhs in Kabul. The newly appointed person will serve as a member of the Council of Representatives of the 22 municipality districts of Kabul and will advocate for the rights of Sikhs and Hindus. The Taliban in August celebrated two years of returning to power after US-led foreign forces withdrew from Afghanistan. Soon after, Sikhs and Hindus, who are minorities in the country, feared the draconian curbs they had imposed on the communities during their 90s reign. The Taliban's coming back to power has also eroded women's rights in Afghanistan as they are banned from universities and girls have remained prohibited from school beyond sixth grade. Maldives President-elect Mohammad Muizu has reiterated the call for India out demanding removal of Indian troops from the island nation. In an interview with BBC, Muizu, who is stalled to assume office later in November, said in his meeting with the Indian ambassador, he had conveyed his agenda of removing Indian military personnel from his country. I promise this to the people of Maldives and will live up my promise, Muizu was quoted as saying by the news agency. The president-elect Muizu is backed by the PPM of former president Abdullah Yamin, who is known to be close to China. His party in the past has viewed India's overwhelming influence as a potential threat to sovereignty and had championed an India Out campaign against a small unit of the Indian military. India, with traditionally close ties to Mali, denies the assertion. And Skyru, the India space startup Aerospace on Tuesday, unveiled Vikram Bun, a multi-stage launch vehicle with an expected space launch in early 2024. The rocket was revealed at Max Q in Hyderabad and was inaugurated by Union Science and Technology Minister Jitendra Singh. Globally, Vikram One is among elite few rockets with the capability to deploy orbital satellites. Addressing the gathering, Singh said that the unshackling of the space sector has led to a startup boom, adding that the number of startups in the country has risen from single digits to 150 currently. So today we are in a position where we no longer is India being seen as a country to be led by other countries. We are now giving leads to other countries, at least in the space sector. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.